HIV from the f***ing handcuffs, I'm suing your police department. Shut up. In the United States, you are five times more likely to spend time behind bars than you are in the UK. Every day, you wake up in a bad dream. I'm telling you, hell on earth, man. Hell on earth. Before you are convicted of a crime in America, you'll do time in jail. Garbage. It's not a uh, Donald Trump motel. This is jail. The maximum security facility in Albany, New York, houses a thousand men and women. I always tell everybody it's a city within a city. There's a lot going on in here. Open up! We've had inmates literally walk out the door and 20 minutes later come right back in again. Petty criminals live alongside gangsters and those accused of murder. He took somebody's life for a high. Every day, 240 dedicated officers put their lives on the line. I need to let these inmates know that we are in control. From the moment a new inmate arrives to their final day in court, where their fate is sealed. I don't think it was him. I will continue to believe he's innocent. I haven't met a guilty one yet by their own admissions. Life inside jail pushes humanity to its limits. I love you, Tinkle Butt. I hate myself for being here. <laughs> where did decency go, and where did morality go? Bang, bang, bitches. The United States locks up more people than any other country in the world. Just leave your hand loose, I'm gonna roll each finger. One of the largest jails in New York State, Albany welcomes around 20 new inmates a day. I've just been kidnapped. I was outside, now I'm not. Just remember, Joe, we didn't put you here. All right? Okay. The majority of our inmates in Albany County are pre-sentenced. Some people will come in for a few hours, make bail and get out and never see the place again. I'm not a criminal. I don't know why I'm here. Unlike the UK, those charged with petty crimes will be held alongside those suspected of violence. You can get everything in here from just a simple marijuana dealer um, all the way up to a double, triple um, homicide. Turn your whole body to the left, facing the shelves. But we also have our low level, and of course we have some white collar stuff in here that could be just tax evasion. This is ridiculous, bro. Every year, 7,000 people are processed through bookings. Where they end up living depends on their crime. I don't have to talk to nobody if I want to, bro. Sure Those with the most serious charges will find themselves upstairs on the maximum security tier. How you doing, AZ? You heard? Sound like gun charges. What was I doing? Robbing, selling drugs, shooting at people. Shooting at people. Stuff like All that. All the wrong things. All the wrong things. I just got out of prison about five months ago. I came home, I made about $10,000. I shot at people, was robbing people. Nearly half of all violent crime in America is committed by gangs. On the street corners of New York, there are around 50,000 gang members fighting for drug territory. Out in the street, they're out robbing people. They're out shooting people. They have pulled kidnappings. They have killed family members of law enforcement just to try and get the law enforcement to back off. They're brutal. You're living in here with these guys. You would better know what you're living with. To cope, the jail has a gang intelligence unit. They carry out regular shakedowns to find who belongs to which gang. Turn your arm over. He's got more over here. A big part of what we do in the gang unit here is tattoo documentation. Uh, every tattoos, graffiti, all that stuff tells a story. Tattoos are huge. Gang members earn tattoos based on the crimes they commit. Teardrops can mean a couple different things. If they're colored in, solid color, generally that'll mean they committed an act of violence. They could have possibly murdered someone, attempted murder, stabbed, shot, whatever the case may be. 
but it's something that's earned. Those considered too dangerous to live alongside other prisoners are placed in segregation in the shoe. This is life inside jail. Don't do nothing bad to come back to a place like this and have your freedom taken away. Be good. The shoe is currently holding seven senior gang members that have been transferred from New York's notorious prison, Rikers Island. Coming from Rikers, there is a reputation that follows them and the word spreads throughout the facility. We've got guys here that are no joke. <sighs> Some of these folks have been very serious charges. The most dangerous charge that we talk about is the assault on staff, which makes my staff uneasy. We don't bow down to nobody. Right this down, we don't bow down. I've asked staff to be very careful with these individuals, understand who they are, understand that a lot of these folks don't care what happens. You are watching dangerous criminals and you better act accordingly. Charged with attempted murder, Mike Turner is a crip from New York City. He is considered so dangerous, he can only be let out of his cell while restrained. He has to take his exercise in an indoor cage. So if you come to jail and you still want to act crazy, they gonna see you to their jail, the inside jail. That's just how it go. My legs, everything shackled. Are you dangerous? Am I dangerous? I'm saying that's what my record said. I don't believe so. Like I got enemies. I'm saying if they catch me, they might do something to me. If I catch them, I'm gonna do something to them. It's no if ands, it's no buts, it's no maybes. It's going down. Like I'm out there, I'm shaking, I'm moving, I'm doing what I gotta do. We got guns, we got drugs, we got whatever we need, and we gonna have fun, you know? That's just the life, that's just what it is. I'm a gang member, it is just like, it's the life, you know? Anything I've done to a person, intentionally, they deserved it. The jail safety and security is maintained by 240 highly trained correctional officers. Wednesday morning, I'm out of here. Former professional American footballer, Sergeant Mark Valvo, has been working here for 16 years. The inmates, they, they call me Superman. How long have you been here? Like four months, six months, I've eight been months? I've here 58 days today. All right. And I'd be walking around in tears and I'd hear them, oh, that's Superman. Don't mess with Superman, that's, that's not the one you want to mess with. But some inmates don't play by the rules. Come, come with me. When gang member Mike Turner first arrived at Albany, it was on his terms. Mike came in and wanted to establish that he was a fucking badass. That's how he gets his respect and so people don't fuck with him back. Despite being outnumbered 15 to 1, Mike attempted to grab a taser from one of the officers. The plan was to get that stun gun. I'm not even going to hold you up. That was the plan. That, that little yellow gun right there, I wanted that. It was a stick-up situation. It was a hostage situation. That's what it was going to be. Somebody was going to be a hostage. That's how you get killed. That's how you get killed. If I would've got killed, then whoever I would've had as a hostage would've got killed too. That'd've been two murders, eh? You either gonna be the sheep or you gonna be the bull. I'm not gonna be the sheep. Two men have been charged in connection with the stabbing death of a hairstylist back in August. Local police have made arrests in connection with a robbery that ended in murder. Two suspects are being taken into custody at Albany Jail. Police say those men were looking for money and they were willing to kill someone to get it. The pair are accused of stealing $700 from a hair salon to pay for their heroin addiction. He definitely went there with the intention to get money from the salon and the knife came into play and it was used to stab Jacqueline. News of the arrests reaches the jail, where many of the officers knew the victim. I see a lot working here, but 
Never fails to twist your gut, does it? You don't know what kind of guys these guys were before they got hooked on heroin. You don't know if they have kids or if they have family or anything like that before they got hooked on this, on this, on this junk. It's horrific that they murdered a woman for such a minuscule amount of money to support their habit. But not only did they kill her, but they killed their lives as well. Michael Shimalewski is accused of fatally stabbing hairstylist Jacqueline Parika. Sean Morland is believed to be the getaway driver. What are you crying for? Huh? Not crying? Do you have a history of drug or alcohol? Um, some history of drug use, I suppose. What's, what drug? Heroin. How much do you use? A couple bags a day? That's not a little drug problem. No, I, I, I'm well aware of that. Killed an innocent girl? Doesn't make me feel happy, but I have to put their charges aside and just do my job. Turn your whole body to the left, facing those blue shelves. They did it for their heroin use. That's what makes it even worse. Especially if she gave them the money, they didn't have to kill her. And they still did. Heroin's a bad drug. Come on out. In New York, there are over 7,000 inmates behind bars for murder. More than in the whole of the UK. They could have taken the money and they could have left her alone, but he was a sick fucking guy and he took somebody's life for a high. Close four. He looks drained, looks like he's had everything taken out of him. He knows that he's going to start a new aspect of his life and he's not gonna like it and there's nothing he can do about it. Michael and Sean are placed in isolation for their own safety. 17. Inmates placed in segregation in the special housing unit are there for everyone else's safety. A lot of these guys are the worst, are the worst out there. They have a lot of experience in the streets, you know, fighting, you know, weapons. You have to be ready at all times and expect the absolute worst. There's plenty of jails across the country where you know, staff has been killed, murdered, you know, hurt, bad. And uh, it's, if you're complacent, if you think it's never gonna happen to you, you're wrong. There are nearly three quarters of a million violent offenders behind bars in the US. These soldiers of fortune, like the 18 soldiers of fortune. You know, force down his arm while bringing to the floor like this. Down, 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 down. From here, rotate around. With such violent inmates being held in the jail, officers are taught how to defend themselves. But unlike in British prisons, the officers here are armed with tasers. It's an excellent deterrent. You know, you just put your hand on it and, no, I don't want nothing to do with it. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you taser, taser, taser. All officers are tased as part of their training. In my opinion, it's the worst five seconds I, I've ever had in my life. If you get two good connections, you, you're done. Taser, taser, taser. <laughs> the taser fires a five-second blast of 50,000 volts. Don't move, pal. You're done. You did it. Feeling good. I'm ready to go. All right, you ready, Bird? You got it, Lieutenant. All right. Taser, taser, taser. Oh, God, please no. Oh, no, get it off. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. All right, buddy, don't move. Oh, oh that was the worst. <laughs> that was brutal. Oh, God. That is, that is absolutely the worst thing that I've ever done. You know how we had to badly these bitch ass CEOs today once again. Okay, that's fine. 
It's not just physical violence that the officers have to deal with. Mike Turner and the Rikers gang members have started throwing feces out of their cells. Somebody pissed out the door earlier. They want to treat us like fucking animals. We don't act like fucking animals. That ain't shit. This whole team is fucked up for All you niggas is cocksuckers, nigga. They got a fetish for black dick. Hey, man, have I ever, have ever done you wrong? No. Don't matter. They ain't fooling no fucking body, nigga. They ain't tough, nigga. Hey, you guys got to do what you got to do. I'm just here. Most of these guys aren't ever going home. So this is their recreation. This is how they get by the monotony of their day. If you play into that, then you're giving them that recreation that they want. What are we doing? This is our house. We control this shit. Niggas throw shit, piss, do what we want to do when we want to do it. But they never let us out these cages and let us perform and really tear this shit up. Come on, come on. The jail employs well-behaved inmates to do the cleaning, cooking, and serving of food throughout the facility. It's boring here. There's not a lot to do, so it makes the time go by quicker. Otherwise, you're sitting in a cell or a bay setting all day with nothing to do. And as a runner or a worker, you get a chance to talk to a lot more different inmates because you're, you know, around them and you're moving and you're doing stuff. How much do they pay you to do this? $8.75 a week. $8.75 a week? Yep. Yeah. I love it. What do you like about it? It keeps me in my cell. It keeps my mind going. just keeps me busy. I've been cleaning, like, that entire side. The bars are all cleaned. It just keeps my mind busy. This is Tammy's first time behind bars. Married with four daughters, she's facing five years in prison for stealing to feed her heroin addiction. And then this was Casey's birthday. Now, this we just had in September. And if you notice, it's 9, 10 at night. And I'm right here. That's my arm. And what's sad about this picture is I'm high. And it took me till 9 o'clock at night to get her a birthday cake because I was getting my drugs. But I still wanted to make sure I got her cake. You know, but they don't care about the cake or the presents. They just don't want me getting high, you know? It tears families apart. It's a very powerful drug. I've seen good people go bad because of the power of that drug. They are victims, but there's got to come a point where they take some responsibility and try to climb out of that hole. Vashon. The main way loved ones keep in touch with inmates is by mail. Tammy has just received a letter from her 12-year-old daughter, Sierra. I love you so much, and I'm failing, but I'm trying my hardest, Mom. I need you to know I love you so much, and we will be OK. I never, ever touched heroin until I was 35 years old. So in four years, I have destroyed my life. It's taken everything from me, everything. New York is currently experiencing a drug epidemic. On arrest, around 60% of inmates test positive for illicit drugs. Heroin addict Ethan DeFigio has been arrested on drugs charges. It's the third time he's been to Albany jail. The guy's lost his mind, talking to himself. He's just cuckoo in the head. That's what drugs do to you, heroin. Never do heroin. Never come to jail with him. He's still coming off of drugs. He slept four hours and eight days off of drugs. That's what drugs do to you. Everybody watching this, this man is crazy. Why are you doing this to me? I'm not doing anything to you. Heroin's rampant now. Brutally addicted drug addicts. They have no respect for anything their own parents. As far as saving them from themselves, jail is the best place for those people. Ethan is placed in a holding cell in the jail's medical unit until he detoxes. 
We don't do anything for it. They literally have to go through withdrawal, which takes like a week, and they're puking and pooping and in pain, and you feel bad, but you don't, because they get right out and do it again. It's the worst fucking pain you ever feel in your life. You don't feel like you're gonna die, you want to die. It feels like your blood itches. You wanna crawl out of your fucking skin. Mike, you gotta take that off. You can't be wearing that over your head. I gotta be able to see you at all times. 23-year-old addict Michael Shimalewski has never been in trouble with the police before. But now, he faces spending the rest of his life behind bars for murder. He's definitely a suicide risk. When he comes out of this haze that he's in and he starts to clear up and realize what he's done, it's gonna hit him like a ton of bricks that he's actually taken a life. The victim was a local 32-year-old hairstylist. I don't know what exactly went on inside that salon, but it's obvious at this point that you've got two addicts that were looking to feed their addiction. Unfortunately, here you are committing a heinous act like murder. Listen, he killed an innocent, beautiful young lady. It takes a lot to plunge a knife into somebody's neck. He needs to stay in jail. Since his arrest, Michael has written an apology to Jacqueline's family for what happened on the day of the murder. I can't think back to that image. I can't think about it. It breaks me every time. I can't, I can't see it in my mind. It hurts. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen anything that ugly, that painful, that broken. A human body that broken. It's not right. I hate what I did, and I hate what caused it, but at the same time, it, it still happened. <laughs> it's a whole different kind of hell when you... you you hate what you've done, and you hate why you've done it. You wish you could change it, but reality puts you here. I have no choice but to live here every day for the rest of my life. I have no choice but to lose contact with the people I love. I have no choice but to deal with whatever whatever comes in this place. Are you a dangerous man? No, <laughs> not. For one day, for one moment, I was. And I guess suppose I deserve to be here, but no, I'm not. Mike Turner and the Rikers gang members have upped the stakes. The jail has received a letter warning that they are planning an attack on officers. I overheard the Bloods and the First East talking about putting a hit on sergeants and corrections officers. The New York City guys are pressing the Albany Bloods to unite and fight stab cut the COs. Is that what people sign up for when they come to work? They should be very aware of it. We're watching criminals, we're watching people who uh, are either convicted or accused of serious crimes. Although Mike Turner is locked in the shoe, he still has influence across the jail. He's calling the shots. His soldiers do the violent acts and he sits back and just directs them. That's, that's part of the gang mentality. I'm the boss, do as you're told. If I come up to a dude and be like, yo, listen, this is what I need you to do, I need you to, uh... See that dude over there? Don't don't look at him. Talk to me. He gotta get he gotta get cut or whatever. They gonna be like, all right, I, I'm got no problem doing it. But they're gonna do that because they know you would do it. This is the new fucking rinkers. It's not over no more, man. This is our world now. This slash, this rinkers. This done change, baby. Albany Jail is on lockdown. They've received a letter warning that gang members are going to attack an officer. What it has forced everybody to do is be on their toes a little bit more. They specifically want to target sergeants and correctional officers by cutting. Over the past two days, they have discovered 14 prison-made weapons hidden on the male tiers. Here's an interesting one. Um, they removed a bolt from the ceiling and they placed it into a pen using toothpaste. So when they took the cover off the pen, 
Now they've got a nice stabbing weapon. We are a gang also. I need to let these inmates know that we are in control. You got people in here that don't like you and, and they want to hurt you. While every corner of the jail is searched for weapons, the Rikers gang members in the special housing unit are protesting against their treatment. They're refusing to give back their plastic food trays. Worried that they will be fashioned into weapons, the emergency response team are getting ready to take them back. It's never a fair fight in jail because we're the biggest gang in here. If you fuck around and you won't listen to our orders, stop fighting, stop resisting, we're gonna make you stop. You gonna hand out the food tray? I don't wanna give up the tray, sir. You do not. I'm gonna give you one order to give up the tray and then we're gonna come in. No problem. Open it. One by one, the inmates refuse to comply with the order to hand over their trays. They are all tased and restrained. Last to be dealt with is Mike Turner. <laughs> we send Jesus Christ to myself. I don't give a fuck. I felt like a superhero. When it's time to go to war, bones get broke, people get hurt, people die sometimes. It's just what happened. Would you have been prepared to kill someone? If I would have had a weapon, yeah, I would have tried to kill someone. That's a fact. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's a fact. You, you know, there's no dispute in that. Pull a gun off your body with your left hand. All the Rikers gang members are strip searched, placed in clean cells, and given even more time in segregation. Sometimes I think I gotta be out of my mind to do this for a job, man. Straight insanity every day. Just being, you know, in that environment every day. Dirty, stinks. You try to tell people like what what goes on. They're like, what? I feel fortunate, you know, I was raised in a good home. You know, some of these people, man, they, they no mothers or fathers, or it's you know, all wrecked through drugs. It sometimes makes you feel like it's hopeless for society, man. Inmates at Albany Jail are allowed two one-hour visits from their family and friends every week. It's the only connection you've got to the outside world. I mean, you can write letters, but you want to see your family. Female inmates who want to look their best on visit day will often get creative, as makeup isn't allowed in jail. So this is coffee and then a little dab of clear toothpaste, Colgate toothpaste. And then you have lotion and you mix it together. And then, you know, before my visits, I use a toothbrush, a state toothbrush, and then I apply it. This helps me feel better about myself. Today, Tammy is having a visit with three of her four daughters. She hasn't seen her youngest since her arrest four weeks ago. I'm excited. I can't wait. I've seen Nikki and Casey. I haven't seen Sierra. So I just can't wait to see her. Tammy's daughters have driven an hour to see their mom. But her youngest, Sierra, isn't being allowed into the jail. My sister didn't have proof. They 
that she had custody of me. Like she didn't bring any papers or anything. So what did they say to you? They just said that I wasn't allowed in and that's it. And then I had to come out here. Sierra must wait in the car park while Nikki, Casey, and Tammy's granddaughter have their visit. Where's Sierra? No, no, no. Are you serious? And they won't let her in. Why won't they let her in? She told the supervisor and everything. We can't do the whole visit then because I don't want Sierra sitting out in the car this whole time by herself. I'm so sorry, you guys. Is everything okay? Yeah. Can I just hug her real fast? <laughs> when you're a drug addict, you don't care about your responsibilities. All you care about are those drugs. A lot of people have to hit rock bottom before they'll clean themselves up and turn their lives around. I'm sorry, Nikki. I really want to be home with you guys, but really, was I ever really there? I mean, whoever says I'm happy to be in jail, but I am happy to be here. <laughs> what do you miss most about your mom? Just being with her. I love you so much. I love you. Bye, baby girl. I love you. I feel really bad that it came to this, but I'm still glad that I'm here. You know? She had habits that were kind of destroying our family. Really and bad. She needed to get better, and she wouldn't have gotten better by herself. While Tammy faces five years away from her children, the average stay at Albany is 42 days. I'm one of the first people they run into when they come into the facility, and I usually get them at their worst. It's funny because it starts with me, it ends with me. Every inmate is searched to prevent the smuggling of contraband into the jail. I just kick your shoes off real quick for me. If an officer suspects they might be hiding anything, they will have to strip. And the waist spread across. I don't know, you know, a lot of people haven't seen a strip search, a lot of people haven't seen what we do when we strip search somebody, but at some point, if you're trying to hold something in your luggage, okay, and they tell you to spread and cough, it's gonna poke out, unless you got really good muscles. So, some of these girls don't. And, voila, here come the drugs. You know, I don't know what they're thinking. Except from getting high. Why do you, why? You're already in trouble. If you get caught, forget about it. I mean, it's all type of shit that goes on. <laughs> they put weed, drugs, knives, whatever, whatever could fit. <laughs> whatever could fit. If it could fit, it goes, you know what I'm saying? My boy, it was like, yeah, I'm going downstate and um, motherfuckers be stinking. I ain't gonna be stinking because I'm bringing my deodorant with me. I'm like, how you bringing your deodorant with me? He like, nigga, I'm boofing that shit. I'm like, what? You boofing the deodorant? He like, hell yeah. He boofed the deodorant and the roller stamps. I said, oh, you ain't play no games. Oh, that. You ain't gotta worry about that with me. There's only one toll paying this way, baby. It's going exit only. <laughs> Right when I first started, we had a guy who decided he was hungry. He wasn't hungry to the point of asking us to get him food. He was hungry to the point of pulling a hot dog out of his ass and eating it. And he offered it to one of the CEOs. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm laughing because it's totally unbelievable to a person that would never think this stuff could happen. But this is what we see. This is our world. Every day, the jail transports around 30 inmates to court. Today, after spending three months behind bars, Michael Shimaluski 
as a pre-trial hearing. One of the two men accused of killing Jacqueline Parika last year was in court this morning where he rejected a plea deal. Michael Chmielewski was offered a deal to plead guilty to second degree murder and serve 25 years to life in prison. He turned that offer down. The prosecution then withdrew the offer and Judge Thomas Breslin says the case is now headed for trial. Whilst Michael waits for the case to go to trial, he must continue living in Albany jail. Before his arrest, he had a promising future. In the top 1% of students, he was awarded a $60,000 scholarship to study nanophysics at university. He is a kid that lived in the same neighborhood as I did. His father's a retired detective. His brother's a Marine. His, you know, I've heard nothing but good things about his family. When you take a kid like that, that has a bright future. I had coached in baseball, great kid. Athletic, smart, has the um, intelligence level to probably do any type of career that he chose to do. Just goes to show you the power of addiction and how it's mind changing, and life changing, or life ending. I had everything. I had support, I had talent, I had opportunity. I had anything a person could need. And I th managed to throw it all away. I guess it's a jail thing. You just drink it cold? Yeah. Yeah, because we don't get hot water here much. So you get used to drinking coffee cold. Yeah, it's disgusting. Since her arrest four months ago, Tammy has been clean of drugs. This morning, she discovered her 19-year-old daughter, Cheyenne, in one of the cells. Hulk. Hulk. Hey, baby. All right, listen, you said you were cold, so I brought you up socks and a shirt, OK? Arrested for possession of heroin, Cheyenne will be locked in her cell until she detoxes. She's going to be very sick, and it's heartbreaking. It's definitely a cycle. There's no question asked about that. Moms and daughters come to jail a lot, and the pattern repeats itself. I see it all the time. Whole families will be in here, and it breaks your heart. I feel helpless. I wish I could go in there right now and just lay down with her and hug her. And then I feel like she's here because of me. Like, I'm the one who fucked her up. Obviously, I'm not a good fucking role model. Here I am sitting in jail myself, you know? It makes me feel like a piece of shit. Time must go really, really slow for you in this place. I know, I could not imagine doing five years. I can't even think of that. I, it's not even registered in my head yet. Like, I'm just gonna keep... Tammy's daughter, Cheyenne, has been released on bail. Before leaving, she left a note. Mommy, I want you to know how much you truly mean to me. I need you to know that you are the closest thing to me in this life of mine. I wouldn't trade you being my mom, my mother, for anything. Since you've been clean, there's such a change in you. I see life again. I don't ever want you to go back to that life you left behind. I wish nothing more than to just lay with you and have you rub your fingers through my hair. All in all, I'm glad to call you mommy. It's this letter that makes me feel that as long as I do the right thing, she'll follow. That's the only way I can help Cheyenne. You can't blame the child. They really are almost a victim. But at some point, the cycle has to be broken. Facing life in prison, Michael Shimaluski has asked his lawyer to try and negotiate a reduced charge before he stands trial for murder. 
I'm not a murderer. But you are a murderer. Or killer, not a murderer. All right, I did not murder her. I did not have the intent to kill her. I never wanted her death. And I got no satisfaction from it. All right, I am for life. And if I had the power to trade mine for hers, I would, but that, I don't. On the outside, he has a four-year-old daughter called Parker, who is looked after by his estranged wife. She knows her daddy broke the law. She knows her daddy's in jail. And that's where we're gonna have to visit him. It doesn't matter that he's in here. A little girl needs her dad. I didn't have mine growing up. She needs hers. I don't want my daughter to think he's a monster. I don't want her to be teased in school or anything because of this. I don't want her to have to grow up without him. I didn't have a dad growing up. It sucks. I trust you to always be there as the mother of my child. Michael was 19 when he married Devin, but they separated because of his addiction. I'm always going to wish we stayed together. He was a really nice person. He always put everybody's needs before his own. Like, if you looked at him, you could just see love in his eyes, you know what I mean? That's why all of this was so freaking hard to believe, hard to understand. All I've ever wanted was just to co-parent and raise her daughter together. I know. I know. That's all I've ever wanted, because <laughs> a little girl needs her parents. Parents who get I don't think it was him. I will continue to believe he's innocent. Every hope I have for the future revolved around someday getting back to you, getting back to Parker. And then you guys find guilty this this crime? Then we'll deal with it. We'll stand by him no matter what. Because at one point, my best friend, and he still is my husband. No one ever wants to believe that someone you love could commit horrible crimes. I wouldn't want to believe it. She's either going to stand by him or she's going to move on with her life. It won't be easy. It'll be brutal for the poor girl. I think personally it would make me a bad person to not stand by him. If I was in his shoes, I'd want him standing by me. Devin continues to visit Michael every week while his future lies in the balance. She understands that it wasn't me that did it, that it was me, but it wasn't the person I am. And, and she knows full well that I could never, in my right mind, hit or hurt a woman. And, and, and even if she, for some reason, never came back here, what she has given me will last my entire life. You know, it, she made me decide to live. She made me decide to make something out of this life, regardless of where I am. That drug is not responsible for what happened. If the judge deems that he's guilty, the jury finds him guilty, then it's Mike, it's not, it's not the heroin, it's Mike. Gang member Mike Turner is being returned to Rikers Island to prepare for his trial. If found guilty of attempted murder, it will be many years before he can hustle on the streets of New York again. It's like Iraq in, in my neighborhood. Dudes will kill you for anything. Anything. You say the wrong thing, you look at a person the wrong way, he want to kill you. He, he was beefing with the dudes right across the street from us. And now I can know your mother. You can know my mother. We went to school together. And now we enemies. Like, we used to play together in the sandbox and all that. But now we just enemies. Like, that shit is sad, but that's the life. At 29 years old, Mike has already spent three years in segregation and much of his adult life behind bars. When you have, like, arch fucking criminals that are just, you know, wrecking balls through society, you know, then, yeah, that's good for society. What if you get, like, a younger kid who thinks it's cool for this gangster bullshit, and then they get a taste of it in here and they think that's cool, you know, so is this the best place for them then? I, I, I don't know. For society, yes. 
jail is probably the best place for some of these people. Around 2.30, officers emerged with what appeared to be their suspect. When they walk through the door, they think, oh my God, life's over. Wait for the flash. I am uh, accused of murder. I'm really worried about my cousin's life. He's fighting for his life right now. A trial is not a search for the truth. He shot Marquise. He killed him. I could get 25 to life in prison, or I could be free to go home to my family. 